Good evening. I'm glad that you're able. Hope you can join in with us. I'm glad everybody who does join in with us on this service this evening. I know it's at six o'clock normally on Wednesday. We're here at seven, but with not being virtual, we can do this at six and, and hope that people can still have time for their dinner and their family time. And, um, I want to share with you some special announcements and things going on, as well as I want to share with you a word of encouragement this evening. Um, first reminder I want to give you um, is that on this Sunday, uh, we will be back in the church. we will be Sunday school classes at 10 o'clock, worship service starting at 11, and we look forward to people being back with us in church on Sunday. Um, also, I want to mention to you, I want to thank, first of all, Sister Tanya and Brother Frankie for video. We've got two videos going. One that's going to um, that's going through Sister Kathy's Facebook page and the one going through the church's Facebook page as well. So um, so you can watch them on any of those. And again, we appreciate if you share these. Um, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, the produce stand will be open, the youth produce stand. And I believe they said they're going to have about 100 more pounds of vegetables. And so if uh, you want to share that and encourage people to come because it'd be a whole lot better for them to get rid of them than for those vegetables to um, to rot. And um, so, so they'll have, I know they'll have tomatoes, probably cucumbers, probably zucchini, uh, just all kinds of stuff. A lot of healthy stuff. They won't have anything that's unhealthy, I don't think. So, And it looks like I've been looking out there. They got watermelons going to be coming pretty soon. Um, there's some watermelons that are... Uh, that are the size of our dog bear out there. So there, there's some big ones. And I'd rather anybody cut open a watermelon than a dog. But I um, want to mention to you uh, some prayer needs that are very important for us to remember in prayer right now. Most of you probably have already heard or found out Sister Kathy Hopper uh, passed away this morning suddenly, um, unexpectedly. Please remember the family of Walter, um, Amy, their daughter, their sons, Lynn and Jeff, and their grandkids in prayer. They, um, they're all devastated right now. Um, just remember them in prayer, that God would comfort them and minister to them. Um, and we just, we just want to hold them up. We'll be praying for them in just a few moments. And then once we get word on arrangements, um, we'll certainly let you know. And uh, we just, you know, right now everybody is just stunned and, um, you know, caught off guard. But. Um, certainly be in prayer for them. We also ask if you have a prayer need, um, if you will post it on the Facebook thread, uh, post that prayer need, and at the end of this time, we will we will pray over your need, and, and we want to cover those things. Um, we do have a prayer need. Uh, remember Katie Beth in prayer. Katie is uh, in Jonesboro. She's sick right now, so just uh, remember her in prayer that God would touch her, and I know there's so many others that need prayer, but we want to begin with prayer right now and ask God to touch and minister. God, we love you today, and we thank you for this opportunity to be here. <clears throat> and God, we know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. God, I pray right now for the needs of the people. Lord, I pray for um, Walter Hopper and their family during this loss of Kathy. Lord, that you would minister to them and bring comfort and peace to that family. Lord, I know they are hurting and they need ministering to. Lord, I pray that you would just wrap your arms around them with comfort. And Lord, Lord, we just pray that you would touch the kids and grandkids and just minister to them. Lord, I pray, Lord, for your healing for so many that are sick and um, dealing with so many things. And just I pray that you would help. And Lord, I pray for Katie Beth's healing. Lord, we know that you're able to do so. And Lord, I pray for the healing of our church family, dear Lord. Uh, oh, so many different kinds of sickness and things going on. But, Lord, I'm also hearing good reports of people who are recovering and doing better and have had successful procedures and so forth. And, Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. And Lord, let this time that we have together this evening be productive for you. Let it be encouraging. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share with you some things right now before I get into uh, a, a little word I want to share. But, you know... I just kind of, I feel like I need to kind of go over some things that, that I believe is important. And I know that, you know, over these last three services, we've done virtual and, and we did this for some reasons, um, for reasons of quarantine and things like that. But I, I want to encourage people that understand that um, the reality is um, with COVID 
uh, the Delta variants, all the different variants out there right now, the chances are most every single one of us at some point in time are going to be exposed. Um, we're going to be exposed to it at something. There are going to be people that will come into this church uh, that will come into your places of business and work um, who are going to test positive. It, it's going to happen. And what I want to encourage you to is just to remember not to be embarrassed. If you happen to be one of them that tests positive, don't be embarrassed if you test positive or, or, or don't be prideful about it. There's no reason to be prideful about it. Um, to my knowledge, I don't think anyone that I know that has gotten this virus got it intentionally. I don't think anybody tried to go out and get the virus. It just sometimes things happen. And uh, nobody gets sick intentionally. And so let's not be so prideful about things that, 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 that we uh, keep ourselves, act like there's something wrong with somebody because they get sick. Um, we we want to make sure that, that we provide um, prayer and comfort and peace, and we want people to be co confident in those things. The reality is what we did is we took this break from in-person services to allow us a chance to collect ourselves. Uh, we do know that, 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 again, chances are that, that we're going to have more people. We won't be always taking breaks like this, but this, we felt like this was necessity. We Just like I believe it was the right thing for us to um, cancel the 4th of July cookout. As much as I love cookouts, I think it was the right thing to do for the safety of you, my congregation, the people that we love and we cherish. Um, there are going to be other people, um, probably in this church, that are going to um, end up testing positive with it. That is not necessarily a death sentence. It doesn't mean somebody's going to be real bad. It just um, we, we're, we want to make sure that people get taken care of. And um, what we can do, we can be thoughtful and we can be mindful. And I want to encourage you to be thoughtful and mindful of other people's space when we're at church. Um, I, you know, again, I love hugging and, and, and shaking hands and things like that, but right now where we can be safe, let's be mindful of other people's space. Uh, the, the, let's be mindful and thoughtful of that to respect that. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something, even though there's no mandate, um, you, you can still wear masks, and there's no shame in somebody wearing a mask. In fact, me and my family will be wearing masks to church. I, I'm a person that's fully vaccinated. But I'm not wearing the I'm wearing the mask not so much for me, but for for other people. Some people don't like wearing masks. That's fine, but we don't want to shame anybody that does, and we don't want to shame anybody that doesn't. And so, if you choose to wear a mask at church, we fully support that. And um, and, and and we just whatever gives you that level of comfort to feel safe, we want to support that with you. And um, you know that that's just one of the things I I, I think so. I think we probably felt like that um, it was gone or what have you, but the reality is um, this virus isn't going anywhere. It's probably going to remain with us um, for the remainder, just like the flu does, and we're going to have to learn different ways of dealing with it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to provide our best way to maintain a working safe schedule for the church and a working safe schedule for environment for the church so that we can worship God um, freely, but also we can worship God safely. And I believe we can do that. I believe we can have the balance of both. Um, we want to be proactive. We try to be proactive, but the reality is sometimes we, we have to be reactive. And not, nobody likes being reactive. I want to be proactive. I want to plan things ahead of time, but sometimes we have to be reactive. And, and those are just the, the cards that are dealt to us right now, folks. Um, the truth is I don't have all the answers. We None of us have all the answers, and, and we're just kind of, um, kind, kind of some of the stuff we're just having to, to navigate as we go, and we're going to do the best we can, and, and that's all we can do. And I, I don't think we can do any more than the best we can. And um, other churches may do it differently. That's fine. We, don't, um, we have to do it the way we feel like we're supposed to do it to protect ourselves, our congregation, because we love you. Um, and that to leads me to the word of encouragement that I want to share tonight. And I began to look at this and examine this. And I had a whole different Bible study until about an hour ago that I was going to share with you. And I, and I just felt like this coming to my heart, a, a different word of encouragement. And I want to share this with you because uh, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, 
there's some of these things that, that you know, I looked at, I thought from April on, I thought, man, everything's getting back to normal. And, and, and then this happens and we're, we're like, wow, it just seems like it's deja vu all over again, that we're back where we were a year ago. We're not, we're not back where we were a year ago. Um, what we're realizing is, is life is continually changing. So I ask myself, what do we want to do? What do we want to do as a church? And, I, and, I, and there's some scriptures I want to share with you in a few moments, what we want to do. But here's what I want to lay down for you today. I think these are the things that we want to do as a church. And I believe we need to do it. And I think these are the things. What I'm going to share with you in just a few moments are going to be encouraging. Not going to be long, but they're going to be encouraging. We want to love God and focus on Him and not our circumstances. Our circumstances are real. But for, for me, I think the, the key right now is for us to love God and provide a, a, an atmosphere where we as a church body and a group of people love God. And let's focus on Him and not keep our focus on the circumstances. You know, there are a couple of scriptures that, that bring me to that. In, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says that we're to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to us. You know, I, I look at that and I see that's such a powerful word for us. And what's he telling us? He says God needs to be first. And no matter what happened and with the circumstances we're facing, whether it's COVID, whether it's political, whether it's somebody's family situation, We've got to look beyond those circumstances and say, you know what, I want God to be first. And I want to make sure I love him. And, you know, Jesus went on to tell us in Matthew 22, he says, you know, my first command is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. And, folks, that's what we want to provide here. That's what our worship has to be about. When we step in this sanctuary, we want to worship God. We want to love him. When we walk out of this place, we want to worship God, and we want to love him. I don't want us to just love him on Sundays and Wednesdays. We need to love him every day of the week. And we need to make sure that he's our priority. Because the circumstances that we are facing right now seem to be taking all of our emotion and our mental capabilities and taking even part of our spiritual things. But we're focusing on those things instead of focusing on him. And I understand we need to be aware. And we need to... Keep in mind of those things and be mindful of those things, but we need to make sure that we move God back to our primary focus and that we love him more than we ever have. Because truthfully, whether we're healthy or whether we're sick, whether we're in the best relationship with God we've ever been or whether we're in a dry spell right now, God's still God. He's still in charge. And we want to focus on loving him more than ever before. You know, it's, 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 it's what we want to do you know um, the second thing that I, that I believe we want to do and, and this is coming from you as, uh, uh, come from me as a pastor as your pastor we want to love you yeah we want to love God but we want to love you um, the reason that we shut the doors for a few days was out of true concern for you and your health and your safety but we want to love you with relationship and whereas we want to love God and not focus on our circumstances, here's what we want to do. We want to love you and help us get through our circumstances. And we get through them together. You know, where, where we mentioned in Matthew 22, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. He says the second is love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what we want to do. We want to love you like we love ourselves. Another scripture that, you know, that I begin to think about, and I begin to think about this, you know, our circumstances are real. The things we're facing are not fake. They're not just thought up. They're not some conspiracy or anything like that. These are real things that we're facing. And here's the truth right now. Is the Bible tells us, Jesus told us in Matthew 24, He who endures to the end will be saved. And I believe every one of you can endure to the end. That you should endure to the end. And that's what we want to help you do. And you're going to endure. Some things are going to be this virus that we're facing. Some things are going to be a family situation that we're facing. Some things are going to be something in your personal life that you're facing. But you can endure. And so what we want to do is we want to love you. And we want to focus on getting each other through our circumstances. And not just us helping you get through your circumstances, but you helping us get through our circumstances because we're all in this thing together. And... I, I was thinking of the fruits and vegetables that, 
that, that these guys have been picking. And, and, and those things are wonderful. But did you know every one of those vegetables that are out there on the table, when they get out there on the table, are dead? Because those, when, they're, when they're out there on the plant, they're alive. But once they get plucked from that plant, they're dead. And, what, and, and I look at all those vegetables on the table that they taste so good. You know, those tomatoes, they look really good. They, 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 they taste so good and they're so beautiful. But they'll only last so long. In fact, if, if people don't come get them, they're going to rot. And if we remove ourselves personally from the vine that we're part of, that's what will happen to us. We'll rot. We'll die. That's why we need this together. And that's why we want to truly focus on loving each other together. And that's a key that I believe God has for us. We truly believe that. The third thing that, that I believe that God wants us to do, that, that God wants you and I to do, wants this church to do, is he truly wants us to impact the lives of others. And folks, that's never left the vision of this church. And even though we're having obstacles, and it seems like a circumstance after circumstance we have obstacles, the vision of this church is still for you to be used by God and still that we can impact others. I remember in Acts chapter 17 when they told them that they needed to leave because they had turned their community upside down. Guess what, folks? We need to turn this world upside down because this world, it may be in a mess and there may be a lot of problems and a lot of issues, but the church must turn it upside down. And we've got to still impact the lives of them. I've never wavered from the thought process that each one of us need to make our lives count. Whether it's, whether it's touching somebody that, 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 that's, that's an outreach kid that, that may ride our church bus or whether it's touching a family that just lost a loved one. We can still impact the lives of others. And you can do it through so many different ways. And we're not going to let COVID-19, we're not going to let politics, we're not going to let circumstances keep us from impacting lives because that's the call that God has placed upon this church. And that's the call that God has placed upon your lives. You see, I believe that. And I, I see God doing some fresh new things in our lives. You see, where I, where I know that is just a few weeks ago, I preached to you a message on Sunday morning, a message called Complete, where in Philippians chapter 1, he says he will complete his work. And his work in us is to impact people's lives and to impact each other's lives. And he's going to complete what he started. Rest assured he's going to do that. Don't you lose faith. Don't lose faith at all. You know, another thing, this, I, I want this so bad. And because I don't understand everything that's going on in this world, but what I want so bad, what I believe that we need so bad is for us to have a freshness from God. And I believe God can provide a freshness for us. You know, Isaiah said this way. He said in Isaiah 43, he said, Behold, I will do a new thing in you. And you know what? God's not done doing new things. God's not through with that. God still does new and fresh things in the lives of the church, in the lives of his people. He still does new things. And I'm still expecting a new thing in our lives, in the church, in this body. I'm still believing that God is going to do some new things in you. How do I know he's going to do some new things in us? Because he's promised it. Do not waver from the promise I shared with you a couple of weeks ago. The word of God spoken to us, spoken to me at camp meeting. That I don't, We're not going to waver from that. Just because we had a bump in the road, just because we had a circumstance that, that, that may have caused us to, to, to be distracted, we're not going to move from that. God's going to do that new thing in our lives and in this church and in your family. Sometimes we have to go through things to get to that thing that God wants to do. And I'm okay with that. Another thing I'm okay with is I'm okay with the fact that I don't have all the answers. Because I don't have all the answers, folks. Um, we cannot understand all the circumstances and situations. But the other thing, we cannot allow, allow all those circumstances to distract us. You see, I know these circumstances are real, but we cannot let these things be a distraction from the call of God on our lives. We can't let them be a, the distraction from the prize of God. You know what he told us in Philippians chapter 3? He's, Paul said, I press toward the goal, toward that prize. And I don't know about you, but I'm still pressing toward that prize. 
God has a high calling for us. God has a high calling for you. God has a high calling for this church. God has a high calling for his kingdom. And, and, and you know, pressing toward the mark isn't always easy. Sometimes that means you have to fight through it to get to it. You know, you have to, you know, you may have to, you may have to tread water before you can swim good. But understand that if you press toward the mark, you will get to the mark that God wants you at. I, I believe that. You know, because I'm reminded of things that he said, told us in Scripture. And, and, if, and if, if there's one thing I've learned, that if I go to the Word of God, he will consistently and continually answer you and answer me. You know what I know? That he's empowered us to where I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Do you believe that? Do you believe that his word is true? That, you know, Paul Walker used to say, you know, I'm going to give that my ten-fingered prayer. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Guess what? You can and you will because God has given you strength. You know, another thing he's reminded me of, he reminds me of this constantly. He says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Do we believe that? Do we still believe God's word to be true? Do we still believe God's word where he says this to us, where he says, all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose? Or all those just things that we've read, we've heard preachers preach about? Or do we believe those things? I mean, do we still believe the, the truth, the, the, the word where he says, what shall we then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Or do we believe that, 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 that he tells us nothing can separate us from the love of God? Do we believe that? I believe those things. I believe his word. And I'm going to hold to his word. And, and folks, I, I'm going to encourage you in his word today. Let yourself be encouraged and understand that, yeah, we're going to focus on loving God and not our circumstances. Yes, we're going to focus. We're, we're, we're going to we're, we're, we're going to focus on loving you and us getting through our circumstances together. We're going to impact people's lives. We're going to experience God's freshness. And we're not. I say we are absolutely not letting the circumstances and situations of this world distract us from what God has called us to. That's where we're going. That's what we're going to do. Church, I love you. I know this is, this is not what I planned, but I've learned over the last 18 months that not everything I plan has to go the way I planned it. And I'm okay with that. God's bigger than any of the things we're facing. He's bigger than any of the things we're facing. And I want you to rest assured and understand and to know that we're praying for you. And we love you. And, um, and, and, and we're not, not talking about just me and Sister Panky, Brother Frank and Sister Kathy. We, we all love you. We love this body from the youngest to the oldest, from the oldest to the youngest. We love you. We're praying for you. And we know that God has good things for you. I can't wait to see you on Sunday. We want you to be here. And we want, we want to be able to worship God together. I believe that God's going to do something fresh. And I also believe that God's going to use these present circumstances to increase us in our spirit and in walking with him and our faithfulness to him. You've showed yourself to be faithful to him over these last um, 18 months, and I, I have no doubt that you're going to continue to do so. Sister Panky, do we have some prayer requests? Okay, we're going to pray for them. So that they'll have a safe family reunion. You know. Would you continue to remember these families in prayer that remember, um, again, remember the Hopper family, remember Brother Walter. And as soon as we find out anything, we will certainly let you know and we will, we will keep you up to date on, 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 on anything going on with her funeral service. And, um, but, you know, certainly if you want to take food to their house and you're not sure where they live, you'll let us know. We'll get you the address. And, um, any, any way that you can help them and that you can minister to, to them. And, you know, I know they're going to appreciate it. Um, yeah, we, Joyce's brother Larry needs prayer. I believe it's his throat that, um, that he needs prayer for, certainly. But let's have a word of prayer, and I want to pray for you.
Why don't you stretch your hands up toward the toward the your screen? And I'm going to stretch my hands towards you and pray for you. Heavenly Father, we love you today, and we thank you, dear God, so much, Lord, for these that are watching tonight and those that may watch later on. I pray in the name of Jesus, dear God, that you would minister to them, and that you would touch them and comfort them and give them peace and joy, dear Lord. God, I pray right now that, dear Lord, that you would touch Brother Walter and their family, dear God. And Lord, I pray for protection, Lord, for our church family, dear God. I pray for protection, Lord, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, dear God. And Lord, for anybody, dear God, that's going through this sickness, dear God, that you would get them through it. And Lord, that it's just a bump in the road and they'll be healed and recovered, dear Lord. And we pray for Katie Beth's healing, dear God, that she feels better, dear Lord. And God, we pray, dear Lord, that, that you touch, dear God, the uh, protection for um, the Welch family reunion, dear God, during this time. And Lord, I pray that they would be safe here. And dear Lord, I pray for Joyce's brother Larry, dear God, that you would heal him, touch his throat, dear God. And Lord, we just pray for help for him, dear Lord. And God, I pray for our church family, Lord, that you would show them great compassion and love. And we thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love you.